the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Patricia Traina. Happy to have you with us. And today's show, we're going to take a look at the state of the Giants. We're about halfway through summer training camp, one third of the way through the preseason games. And we're going to just kind of break down where the Giants are at this point in the summer. And here to help me do that is my good friend, Ed Valentine, who we get to see his uh, pretty little face there for the first time on the podcast. Ed, say hello to everybody. Hello, Patty. And thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, having me on the show. Nice to, uh, to get a chance to chat with you every so often. Yeah. It's been a long time since we chatted, Ed. What, what's it been since uh, Saturday, right? That was yeah, the last time we did. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, I meant, you know, I meant on the air, Patty. I know but. what you meant. I'm just busting on you. Ed and I always bust on each other, folks, as you as you probably can imagine. So. I'm still I'm still mad at you, Patty. Why? By the way. I'm still mad at you. What's that? Because I mean, I mean, it's inside stuff people don't care about. But but you traded seats on Saturday night in the press box to be farther oh. away from me. I'm still mad at you about this. Uh, well, I did what I had to do. You know why I did. It, so <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I still have to bust on you a little bit too. Well, next time, bring me the cookies that you promised, you bum. Oh, Jeez. And he wonders so, why right. I moved away from him. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. So seriously, getting down to football, we are going to talk about the state of the New York Giants. We've got a lot to talk about, Ed. And I think let's start off with overall your impressions of where the New York Giants are as we enter the halfway mark of summer, the one third mark of, of the uh, preseason game. I mean, what have you seen? What do you like? What don't you like? What has you concerned? Well, I think that all in all, you know, you look at Saturday night and I'm not, I'm not concerned about Saturday night. You know, we saw, we saw backups. We saw third teamers. We saw a lot of guys who weren't going to make the roster. We didn't see the real New York giants. If you will, we didn't see Daniel Jones or Saquon Barkley or Kenny Galladay or Sterling Shepard. We didn't see the starting defense. We didn't see Kadarius Tony. So results wise, I'm not that worried about it. I'm really curious, Patty, about these upcoming joint practices, to be honest with you, because I wonder when I look at the Giants, I wonder as I watch them practice and I wonder as I watch the the offense struggle against the a, a Giants defense, which is which to me is obviously ahead of them at this point. I wonder if the Giants are as far along or as 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 steady as they would like to be at this point. There are a lot of areas of this roster, offensive line, uh, in particular in the in the the reserve area, especially. I'm not that I'm not as concerned about the the starting offensive line as some people are, but there there's a lot of of flux on this roster right now i don't think they're as settled as they'd like to be some of that's injury related um but but that's that's my my general take at this point is is i i wish they were a little bit more settled you know but there are still several weeks to go before the regular season starts yeah there are some unexpected injuries i mean and we get that every year and you know, the big thing with the Giants and with any team, really, is how do you respond to the curveballs that get thrown your way? So, Ed, let's, uh, since you brought off the uh, the offensive line, let's go in that direction. Um, that was a big, big storyline in the offseason. It was a storyline coming into training camp. It is still a storyline. You know, you mentioned the starting offensive line, for the most part, didn't look that bad the other night. But... What do you see needing to happen with that that unit? I mean, I think we can all agree that they have to add some depth given the retirements, given the injury situation, but there's nothing out there. So how do they get through the upcoming practices and, and the rest of the preseason game and kind of still get a picture of 
what they have versus what they don't have? Well, I think, first of all, Patty, if you look at the starting group, I, I, I think we all need to see what this group looks like when Shane Lemieux gets back on the field, when he gets to the point where, well, technically he's back on the field, but he didn't play Saturday against the Jets. Let's see what this group looks like when he's out there, when the full five is out there. I think that will ease you know, some of the some of the concerns, not that Shane Lemieux is going to be an all pro, but he's going to be an upgrade over what we saw on Saturday night. So I think that 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 will help in in terms of, of the depth. You're 100 percent right, Patty. There's just not a lot out there right now. There are bodies. There are veteran players out there that you can bring in to help you get through the next couple of weeks. But as we record this show, Patty. There aren't any offensive linemen that you can bring in that you can sign, you know, right this minute who are guys that that you're probably really going to want on your roster, you know, throughout the the full season. So you're just going to have to be patient. You're going to have to see, um, you know, how how the, the rest of the preseason unfolds. You're going to have to see who gets cut, you know, who comes loose what trades you might be able to make as the as the season nears it, it's going to require some patience because you know w- when you look at it when it comes to the depth on this offensive line plan a has been blown up because plan a was joe looney plan a was was zach fulton you know plan a was some of these guys th- that have retired and now you've got injuries piled on top of that and and you can't, you know, snap your fingers and replace all of these guys. It's going to take some time. You know, maybe, maybe it turns out that that a couple of these young guys, Brett Heggy, Jake Burton, a couple of these young guys step forward and 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 become guys that that you can that you can rely on. But we'll, we'll have to see. Ed, can you see a scenario where maybe the Giants would trade for an offensive lineman? I mean, we, we see last minute trades at the final roster cut down all the time. I don't know who would be willing to trade an offensive lineman because they are kind of like gold. But could you see a scenario of that happening? I would rule it out, Patty. You know, you may have a few Giants players. You know, I know we've talked about uh, place kicker Ryan Santoso, although I don't know if anyone would actually be willing to trade for him since he's really still an untested NFL kicker. You might have a wide receiver um, who who somebody might be uh, might be interested in. Maybe you've got a defensive back somebody might be interested in. You know, when, when it comes down to to creating the fifty three man roster, but let's be realistic. The Giants are not the only team in the NFL out there with a need on the offensive line. I think pretty much, you know, probably two thirds to three quarters of the league is out there hoping to find additional offensive linemen, you know, to to supplement their rosters. So there's going to be a lot of competition for these guys. I think it's more likely that you're going to see waiver claims or free agent signings there are going to be guys coming available. And, and I think those are the moves that you're going to see are the, probably mostly the veteran guys who can come in and, and may not necessarily be plug and play, but are guys who know what they're doing and can step in and emer- in an emergency and, 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 and help teams out a little bit. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's not like the giants are one player away from, you know, a, a serious Super Bowl run at this point. So uh, that would probably make the most sense, but it's just something people are just going to have to wait for. And, you know, having patience, I know a lot of people are, are panicking because the offensive line, you know, the backup in particular, the, the starting line lineup didn't look horrible the other night, but the backup, the depth, you know, there are going to be injuries and you want to know that if you have to plug those guys in, there's not going to be as much of a drop off in between uh, the starters and the backup. Plenty more coming up on today's Locked On Giants podcast, Giant fans. But first, no matter what you need for your car or truck, Rock Auto is sure to have it in its extensive online catalog. RockAuto.com offers brand name parts for every make, model, and manufacturer at highly competitive prices and ships right to your door. 
Visit rockauto.com and be sure to write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know we sent you. That's rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. Ed, let's talk a little bit about the rookie class now. And um, just when this class was drafted, I know a lot of people were very optimistic. They were saying this could be one of the Giants' best classes under Dave Gettleman. The summer, the way the summer has unfolded for a lot of these guys, just to kind of put a little bit of a damper on that. Um, Ellerson Smith hasn't been able to really get on the field. Aaron Robinson hasn't been able to get on the field. Uh, Gary Brightwell really hasn't done a whole lot to, to stand up and make you say, okay, he deserves a roster spot. We don't know what's going to happen with Rodarius Williams, if he's going to be able to eke out a roster spot. Really the only guys that, you know, I think might con- end up contributing in any kind of major capacity, o- Aziz Ojulari, the edge rusher, and then Kadarius Tony, And even he's had a rough start to his NFL career. What's been your take on the whole unfolding of the rookie class? And it- do you agree with me when I say that this is all kind of like a temporary worry and that ultimately it- this class is going to be okay? Well, Patty, what I always what I always say is, look, the the draft, you want your draft picks to come in and and light the world on fire and 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 help in the the season that they're drafted. But the draft is not necessarily about the current season. The draft is about the future. The draft is about the long term. Now, you want your first couple of players to get on the field. You want your first couple of draft picks to contribute. You want significant contributions this year from Kadarius Tony and Aziz Ojolari. Um, beyond that, you know, these guys are, are generally developmental players, guys that you're not going to be counting on for tremendous contributions. And, and if you get them in 2021, that's a bonus. If Radarius Williams in a sixth round pick as a cornerback can become a part of the defensive rotation, can become a sub package player and, and be a useful cornerback in 2021, that's a bonus to get something out of a sixth round pick. Now, Aziz Ojolari, I think is showing signs of, of being a good player. I haven't yet seen like a real splash play from him, something that, that, you know, makes you go, oh my God, look at the talent. And yet when you talk to people, when you talk to Kevin Shearer, the Giants off or defensive uh, linebackers coach, he's very impressed by what Ojolari has done, thinks that Ojolari is going to have a really good season for them. Um, you know, thinks basically that he, when I talked to, to Shearer, he called him a ready-made pro edge player guy that's got all the skills that the giants are looking for the the, the question the the question becomes you know what are the giants going to get out of Kadarius tony how soon are they going to get it how far behind is he and you know and and are the giants going to get you know quality production from him as a rookie and i think Listen, Canarius Tony's not the first rookie to suffer an injury. He's not the only rookie in this class, first round pick in this class, to be having ups and downs of training camp. Go, go through the first round picks. Rashad Bateman is out for a long time with an injury. I think Elijah Moore has had some injury issues. There are any number of first and second round picks who are really, you know, having slow starts to their NFL careers. So it, it's not the first time. It's not unusual. You know, let's let's not jump off the bridge and call Kadarius Tony a bust at this point. He's still a tremendous talent. He, he's, you know, he, he's having a slow start, a slow adjustment to his NFL career. We'll see how it plays out. Now, Ed, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Can't say offensive line to this as your answer. What area on this team right now at the halfway point of training camp one third of the way in to the preseason games what area of this team has you most concern excluding the offensive line 
Oh, you took the easy answer away, Patty. You I had the easy to. Answer Come on, away. Ed. You got to think. Of course. Man. Oh, you're 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 gonna make me work, Patty. And I actually really need an extra cup of coffee at this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I do have I do have an answer for you because as you were framing that question, something leaped to mind, and I'll be honest with you, it's an area that I had hoped not to have to worry about with the 2021 Giants. But I'm going to say this. I am not convinced that the New York Giants have a quality running back behind Saquon Barkley on this current roster. To be honest with you, I have yet to see what the Giants saw in Devontae Booker that made them go out and sign him on day one of free agency and give him a two-year contract with something like $3 million guaranteed. I I have yet to see it. Maybe we will see it, but I don't know what it is. I know Dave Gettleman says we think he's a three-down back. Well, maybe he is, but the teams he's played for previously in the NFL haven't seen that and haven't thought that. So so I don't see the... I don't see what attracted the Giants so quickly to Devontae Booker. And and that makes me worry, you know, if if they want to try to limit Saquon Barkley's workload early in the season. I don't honestly think that the Giants drafted Gary Brightwell in the sixth round, thinking of him as a guy that would come in initially and really contribute in the running back room. They drafted him as a special teams guy. They drafted him, you know, as a guy who might develop into a gunner. Guy was a really good, really active special teams player in college. Um, You know, the other guy I've got to talk about is, is, is Corey Clement. Now, Clement has been drawing some media attention through training camp. Clement is a guy who had a couple of nice runs on Saturday night, but Clement had a fumble inside the five yard line that cost the giants a scoring opportunity that, that may well have been the, the deciding factor in that game. Now, admittedly, the winning and losing the preseason games doesn't make any difference. Costing your team points in any situation is, is something that makes a difference. And I happened to look at Corey Clement's history the other day. Do you realize that Corey Clement has fumbled the ball once every 33 touches in his NFL career? That's a guy, that's a guy who's fumbling the ball basically once a game or once every two games, you know, based on touches. And that is just not acceptable for an NFL running back. You just, to me, seven yard gains are nice. 12 yard gains are nice whatever the most important thing a backup running back can do for a football team is not hurting and and i just i look at the backup running back situation behind saquon barkley and i and i just don't it it bothers me because i don't know who who you can trust yeah that's a valid point that's you know one of many many areas that i think are sneaking up as concerns i know for me Tight end depth right now is a concern for me. Edge rusher depth, you know, how that's going to play out. I mean, these are all variables that pop up once you start putting the pads on and you start, you know, really getting into the thick of football. Don't go away just yet, Giant fans. Plenty more coming up on today's Locked on Giants episode. But first, get all the latest news, odds, info, and sign-up bonuses for all your sporting needs by heading over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device. When you open an account and use our special promo code Locked On, you will receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's code Locked On for your 50% welcome bonus. Terms and conditions apply. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Ed, I want to touch on the defense before we close out the show because we haven't really spoken about that unit and I think you know just going off the first team uh, or I'm sorry the first game rather even though the majority of the starters were on the bench I like how Patrick Graham continues to coach that group what did you think about them 
Well, I I like the I like the group that the Giants have on defense, Patty. I like the options that they have. Um, we saw you know second and third team guys on Saturday night. I thought Rodarius Williams was sort of had a welcome to the NFL night. He's had a really really good training camp, but all of a sudden he got targeted ten times the other night. I think he gave up eight receptions. Got got stuck in the slot, which is a place where we haven't seen him practice a whole lot. But I, in, in general, I like the options and I like the depth on the defensive side of the ball. I'm not sure, you know, the giants have, you know, have Leonard Williams and they have James Bradbury, but I, I'm not sure that they have a legitimate superstar on, on that side of the ball. Those, you know, those guys are good players. They're quality players. They had really good 2020 seasons. But what I, I, I like the options that they have. You're seeing guys the other night, you saw guys like Carter Coughlin and, and Reggie Ragland have nice nights, you know, at inside linebacker. You're seeing a lot of options, you know, among the defensive backs. You see guys, um, we saw a couple of, of, young defensive lineman David Moa and Raymond Johnson step up and, and play fairly well the other night. Uh, they have a number of guys that they might be able to rotate in off the edge, depending on who ends up making the roster. So I like the depth. I like the pieces. I like the fact, you know, Patrick Graham's a creative guy. It It's not, in the end, it's not the defense that I'm going to worry about on this football team. Yeah, I'm with you on that. All right, Ed, final question for you. Let's spin ahead now. Still about three, four weeks left of training camp to go. Still two preseason games as as we record this. Uh, Joint practices are coming up. What are you going to be looking for as far as this team taking the biggest step forward? Well, here's what I said at the very beginning of training camp, Patty. People freaked out like the very first couple of days of practice. I remember the very first 11 on 11 drill that the giants did again, you know, offense versus defense. That particular drill was dominated by the giants defense. And to be honest with you, I expected that because it's still largely a seven on seven drill. It's still largely a passing drill. And you've got a secondary for the Giants that is basically already in sync, even with, you know, the addition of Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson's played a lot of snaps with Logan Ryan. Um, they worked a lot together in the offseason. You know, th- that's a group that is basically ready to go. The Giants offense, the Giants receiving core is still building chemistry. They're still learning each other, still figuring out, you know, still learning the playbook in some respects with Kenny Galladay, with John Ross, with Kadarius Tony. What I said initially was, let's get to Cleveland. Let's get to New England. Let's see these joint practices. Let's see how the Giants stack up offensively when they get there against, you know, against some other NFL competition. I just want to see the Giants. I don't need to see the Giants be the Kansas City Chiefs on offense this year. I need to see the Giants get from 17 points to 25 points a game, 26 points a game, which is really league average. Because to me, you get to league average. You've got a better than average defense. That puts you in a situation where you should be in position to win more games than you lose, and you should be in position to be competitive for a playoff spot. So what I want to see over these next couple of weeks as they practice against the Browns and the Patriots is I want to see an offense that looks functional. I want to see an offense that looks competitive. I want to see an offense that looks like it has a chance. Now, admittedly, we're not going to see Saquon on the field against the Browns. We're not going to see Kenny Galladay. We're not going to see Kadarius Tony. So we're not going to see all of the weapons. But I, but I think we need to see an offense that doesn't look overwhelmed. We need to see Daniel Jones get some protection, have a chance to throw the ball where he wants to throw it. 
Um, so that's really the biggest thing that I'm looking for is does the offense even minus some of the players they want to have on the field, does it look functional? Good point. Definitely good point because that is the big concern. It was the concern coming off of the season last year and it is the concern moving forward. So good stuff, my friend, as always appreciate you tell everybody where they can find you on social media, what you got coming up and whatever else you want to tell them. It's at big blue view on Twitter. It's big underscore blue underscore view on Instagram. You can also check out our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, uh, join the community at big blue view. If you haven't done that is, you know, already, uh, just so you can, uh, so you can chat with, uh, with other giants fans. We'll be, we'll be continuing to, uh, to give you as much training camp coverage as we can. I'm, I'm planning to, to take advantage of the fact that, that I am located halfway between New Jersey and, and New England by heading over to, uh, to, to Massachusetts for the Giants joint practices next week in New England. So we'll have some coverage. We'll have some in-person coverage uh, of those joint practices at Big Blue View. Hopefully you'll check that out, Patty. Always, always fun to, to, to chat with you on the show and, uh, you know, and, and next, next time don't sit so far away from me. Hey, I have no say over it. It's where they put me, you know, that <laughs> you, you've been around long enough to know that, but, uh, yeah, seriously, Ed, thank you for, for the time. Uh, always fun chatting with you and, and kidding around with you. I mean, we, we go back so far, so I always enjoy having you on the show Giant fans, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have coverage of the joint practices uh, with Cleveland. We'll have all the latest news, updates, um, all the stuff that you have come to expect from the Locked on Giants podcast. Hope you will tune in. And don't forget to also check out Giants Country, where I do all my written work. So until then, this is Patricia Traina for Ed Valentine. We wish you a great day. And we'll talk to you again soon, Giant fans.